This is Mark Bell from Super Training Gym. Super Training Gym, the strongest gym in the West. We're here in the mountains in State Line, Nevada. Welcome, everybody. Here today to talk to you about strength, and I want to talk to you about three things that you can do to improve your strength in general. Number one is to gain weight. Number one is to gain weight. When people ask, people often ask about getting stronger. How do I get stronger? Well, uh, we could go over technique a lot. We could go over so many different aspects. We can go over your programming and we can get into the weeds on that. We could say, hey, you got to turn your toes out a little bit more and you got to move this way and you got to move that way and you got to train X amount of times a week. But the fastest, the number one way is to simply gain weight. Now, I know some of you may not want to gain body fat. However, there's going to be some give and take. And in the sport of powerlifting or if you're an Olympic lifter or you're just somebody who really is just interested in getting stronger and you want to get a 500 pound bench press or a 500 pound deadlift or a 600 pound squat, whatever the number is, the easiest thing is to just have a little bit more mass. You got a little bit, uh, a little bit more junk in the trunk. It's going to be easier to push those weights around. I'll talk to you a little bit about some of my evolution. Now, there are points where you can gain too much weight and you can actually start to go backwards because your health is compromised. If your sleep is compromised, your health is going to be compromised. You're not going to be running on all cylinders. You're not going to be optimal. And we're looking to be optimal. When it comes to lifting weights, we want to lift optimal weights, not maximal weights. And that will be number two that I'll get to in a second. And I'm not quite finished with number one. Number one, gaining weight. How much weight should we gain? How fat should we get? Let's just start out really easy. Let's get you in a caloric surplus and let's see if we can grow a little bit. Let's just eat a little bit more food. Let's keep the protein at one to 1.25 grams per pound of body weight. Let's keep the carbohydrates in that neighborhood too. And let's keep the fat content uh, maybe probably about 50% of those other two numbers that you came up with. So if you weighed 200 pounds, you should be getting into two, just let's say 200 to 250 grams of protein every day. 100 to 150 grams of uh, fat would be good uh, in addition to uh, 200 to 250 grams of, of carbs. So carbs, protein is the same, 200 to 250. The fat content is about 100. That's probably a good place for a lot of you to start. If you need to up that a little bit, just check the scale. The scale should be trending upward, uh, maybe a pound or two every week. Now, you just gain a little bit of weight. Like, don't really be obsessed about like gaining 30 pounds. But let's see what happens when you gain six pounds or when you gain eight pounds or 12 pounds. Over a period of time, that will matter a lot. The other thing about weight gain is that you need to train with that newfound body weight that you have. So if you gain 12 pounds and you went from you know, weighing 166 to being 178 pounds and you're trying to fill out that 181 class, well, you need to train in that body weight for a little while so your body gets used to that. And now your body's gonna be able to handle more volume, more work, more overall work per workout, more reps, more sets, more weight, and you'll be able to recuperate from those workouts easier and better because you now have a little bit more oomph to your whole entire system. Your training will probably just feel better in general anyway because a lot of you are dieting and you're trying to get stronger while you're trying to eat less at the same time and that's just flat out dumb. It doesn't make any sense. It, it's uh, You're fighting an uphill battle each and every day and I don't think that that's something that you should be doing. All right, even though gaining weight's a lot of fun, we gotta move on to number two. So the number two thing that you can do to gain a lot of strength and it could also be argued that it's the number one rule and that's to find weights that are optimal. We need optimal weights, not maximal weights and not sub-maximal weights. You hear people talk oftentimes about getting stronger with sub-maximal weights. Well, sub-maximal weights, if we could get stronger with sub-maximal weights, which would be 60 to 70% range, then why wouldn't we only do that? It's because you can't get stronger with it. You just can't. Uh, some things have to be dangerous in order for you to get stronger. Things have to challenge your body, they have to challenge your mind, they have to challenge your entire system, they have to challenge even your belief system in yourself. When you see those weights every once in a while, you have to say to yourself, oh fuck, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that. But it's your training that makes it so, it's your training that comes through in the end and that shines through. But if we're doing this with maximal weights, we're gonna teach our body how to lift improperly over and over and over again. If we do it with submaximal weights, the weights are not enough 
to challenge us and to really change us. We need things to be scary enough to really cause a change. We want to stimulate the body but not annihilate it. And so if we go with maximal weights where we're at 100% all the time, uh, that is going to, I've seen it time and time again with many lifters, they're like, hey man, I can't get my bench to move, I can't get my deadlift to move, it is just stuck. I look at their training, I watch how they, they do things, and oftentimes they're leaving a lot of weight on the platform through thinking that they need to train super heavy every single week. So I'll actually tell them, hey, let's actually remove some weight from the bar. Let's take off 25 pounds off each side. Let's take off 45 off even sometimes. I want you to do the lift the right way. Probably, probably one of the greater cases of this that I've seen. You see it time and time again, but people find weights that work really well for them. They find specific weight ranges that work really well for them in order to gain strength, in order to gain some size, in order to um, really kind of redefine how they're doing the lift and to become like a professional at the, at the particular lift. Um, in Sima Inyang, who trains at Super Training Gym and he's uh, one of my co-hosts on the podcast, he came in the, the gym with, uh, I think he was deadlifting around a little over 600 pounds very, very strong guy, very obvious. This guy could move the earth if he gets things figured out the right way. And he immediately went to a 755 pound pull in a really short period of time. Now he's a Brazilian jiu-jitsu purple belt. And even with all the jiu-jitsu that he's doing, he can come in the gym any day of the week and still lift that kind of weight. Now, here's the thing that's important about that. He doesn't normally lift that weight. He normally doesn't lift that heavy. He's normally using five plates. Every once in a while, he'll go to 585. Every once in a while, he'll go to 635, something like that. He might be 100 pounds under the maximal weights that he's lifting, but his grip is still strong, his body is still strong, and he found optimal weights that keep him strong, and he found other movements to help keep that deadlift strong as well. So you might be doing other movements, such as in the case of a bench press, maybe you're doing incline dumbbell presses. Well, that's still assisting your actual bench press, and we can't forget that. These things are really, really important that you remember that all the work you're doing is going towards that. So optimal weights is huge. I would say that optimal weights for most people are probably somewhere between, uh, probably between 80 and 90%. Um, if you are struggling to maintain form and technique, you got to pull the weight off though. So it's not a percentage based thing. It's a, it's a repeat. It's more of a repeated effort thing. Can you do five sets of five cleanly and have everything look pure and have everything look really clean? Do you look like you know how to squat? Do you look like you know how to bench? Do you look like you know how to deadlift? These are things that are really important in order for you to make that progress. So find weights that are optimal. I urge almost all of you that are listening to this right now, take some goddamn weight off the bar. Have the courage and strength to do that and you will be a lot stronger for it in the long run. Almost every single one of you, I can almost guarantee it. I can't say it's true of every, everybody because maybe some of you are already training way too light. The third thing that we got, we got weight gain and we need to find optimal weights. The third thing that's important to strength gain is to find a program that fits, uh, fits your needs. And that, that has to do with what you've done previously. I don't think that people understand that you're only as good as your latest workouts. So never mind what you did four years ago. You know, I, I power lifted for nearly 30 years, but I can't rely on that 1080 squat. I had to have to start over completely. I can't say, okay, I'm going to use some percentages based off that lift. I don't get to do that. It doesn't matter who you are or how you did it. Uh, you, it just doesn't work that way. I would have to start over. So you have to, uh, you're only as good as the last program that you're running and the program that you're about to do has to be in line. It's very important that it's in line with what you did previously. So if you are trying to start to do 10 sets of 10, well, if you're trying to do 10 sets of 10 out of nowhere, that doesn't really make a lot of sense. You're just going to break yourself down and it's completely pointless. How about we start out with three sets of 10 or five sets of 10? Let's ease our way in. Let's add some sets. Let's give ourselves a couple weeks to get acclimated. We're trying to stimulate, not annihilate. We're only as good as our recovery from these workouts. The recovery side of things is annoying. The recovery side of things is boring, but the recovery side of things is where the strength really lies. Do you have the strength to not do something? Most of you don't. 
I know that I never did. I always wanted to go in and lift more weight all the time. I didn't care about recovery. I'm like, F that. I'm just going to go in there and throw down and lift some heavy weights and see what happens. And I ended up getting injured. I ended up falling short of many of my goals. One of them being a 600 pound raw bench. Another one of them being an 800 pound deadlift. And I could have had all my hopes and dreams realized if I would have been patient enough to just stick it out a little bit longer and understand that process of you don't go jumping from one program to another. You, you do something that programs you, that gets you ready, programs you, right? It programs you for what you're about to do next. Those are the three things that you can do to get yourself stronger. Thank you guys so much for following along. It's been amazing having this channel over the years, the Super Training 06 channel. We've had many people, many great guests over the years, and I appreciate all the support and all of you that have been watching from the very beginning. I know there's a couple of you out there. Strength is never a weakness. Weakness is never a strength. Let me know in the comments below what you've done to get yourself stronger. Catch you all later. Whoosh.